On today's Winning Cures Everything, that's right, we're going over 16 college football lines. We are talking spreads. I'm going to give you my pick on the game, uh, my leans, my whatever you want to call it, and we'll look at what the numbers say on each of these. We're going to roll through them pretty quick. So keep your head on a swivel, and let's go ahead and get to it. I've been watching it for 40 years. Are you kidding me? You're listening to Winning Cures Everything. Game day, baby. Wake up or get out. Here's your host. A confident young man. A superb athlete. Gary Seegers. Welcome in. Winning Cures Everything. It is the Friday, September 8th edition of the show. I am your host, Gary Seegers. You can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at GaryWCE. Of course, you want to see my stats, you want to see all my stuff, you can go over to buymeacoffee.com slash winningcures. Uh, you can also get all of my plays and whatnot. You just got to follow me on my Telegram group, t.me slash GaryWCE. There are links to both of those in the chat, so go ahead and check those out. Uh, let me remind you, Three Dog Thursday came out yesterday. Myself, TJ Reeves, uh, we have a blast doing that where we talk only college football underdogs, so go ahead and check out Three Dog Thursday. And, of course, the BetUS College Football Show. Every Tuesday and Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, we come at you live. We had two great shows this week. Uh, we need you to subscribe over there. We're trying to hit some uh, some goals over there. Uh, same for over here. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to get to 10,000 by the end of football season. Uh, we are over 8,900. We're about to hit 9,000. You guys would definitely help. There's a lot of people that watch these videos that are not subscribed yet. So we would certainly appreciate that. Now, without further ado, I went 9 and 11 with my power ratings last week. Uh, so we're going to try and do better this week. And we'll go ahead and start this thing off. We don't want to waste too much time because we are not going to uh, spend long on each of these games. So let's do it. Jumping in, Vanderbilt. A 10-point dog at Wake Forest. This one's 10 a.m. Central Time on the ACC Network. Let's go ahead and pull up the numbers. That's not the right one, is it? Um, let's look at Wake Forest. Just raw statistical numbers right now would have Wake Forest favored by 6.53. But if you look up in that top spot there, Wake Forest minus 14.2 is my power number on this. Look. Vandy's defense has not been good. Number 95 PPA per pass. Uh, their box score was not clean against Alabama A&M, even though it was a, uh, you know, a, a good a good win, a big win. Uh, but you look at what Wake Forest likes to do, and they're very balanced. Uh, I think they have an advantage here. Vandy's best option on offense with A.J. Swan is passing the ball. Uh, so far, Wake Forest defense, number 24 PPA per pass. Now, granted, it might have had something to do with the fact that they're playing Elon. Uh, again, not a whole lot to take away from one week of data, but I do like Wake Forest minus the 10 here. Uh, I think at home, they're going to be able to cover. You look at some of the stats, Vandy is 8-3 and three against the spread on the road against, uh, excuse me, under Clark Lee. Uh, Wake Forest 7-6 and six against the spread at home over the last two years. So, yeah, trends don't really go Wake Forest's way, but I think this number has come down enough. It's at 10. I feel comfortable taking it there. I don't know that I would feel comfortable taking it at, you know, 14 where it was earlier in the week or 12 and a half, whatever it was. Uh, but at 10, yeah, I feel okay with that. I think they can win this game by two touchdowns. Uh, they did the same thing last year. I would expect a Wake Forest win on this one. Moving along, Notre Dame. Heads to NC State, and whew, Notre Dame is a seven and a half point road favorite. Eleven a.m. Central Time on ABC. Uh, look at look at some of the numbers here. We'll go on and pull this up, and I know that number scares some of you, but we'll I'll explain in just a minute. Uh, the over has hit in the last five Notre Dame road games. NC State sixteen and two straight up in their last eighteen at home. And, of course, the spread trends. Notre Dame 3-1 and one against the spread on the road uh, under Marcus Freeman. NC State 3-4 and four against the spread as a dog over the last two years, but they are 2-0 and oh against the number at home as an underdog. Uh, the total is 50 on this. Again, that spread is 7.5. Uh, Look, 
My power rating would have this Notre Dame minus 12.7. My it, just raw statistical data has Notre Dame favored by 40.59, which is bananas. Uh, but when you look at Notre Dame's past defense and whatnot, they played Navy and Tennessee State. They are not, this does not do anything for me. You, we have no idea what Notre Dame is. I, I think seven and the hook is too much here. I know all of my numbers say to go the opposite direction. I get that. But these are these are early, early numbers. Uh, normally, I don't do this early, but I did have quite a few people that were interested in seeing exactly what they say right now. Uh, so I wouldn't take the 40.5, <laughs> obviously. But I will take NC State, plus 7.5 on this one. I think, I think NC State shows up here. I don't think they had their best game against UConn on the road. Uh, but at the same time, NC State has never been great on the road under Dave Doran. At home, Carter Finley Stadium. That's a tough place to play. I I like uh NC State to cover seven and a half here. I'm going against my buddy Parker on that one. All right, next on the board. Troy. That's right, John Summerall heads to Kansas State, and the Wildcats are a 17 point favorite. The total sits at 51 and a half. Uh it's eleven AM on FS1, eleven AM Central Time. Troy, five and O. Oh against the spread, their last five on the road. Um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're 6-0 and against the spread away from home under John Summerall. But you look at Kansas State, under Kleiman, 10-4 and against the spread at home as a favorite. Um, Kansas State is 5-1 and against the spread in their last six overall. The only one that they did not cover was the Sugar Bowl against Alabama. And so, looking at these numbers... My power rating has Kansas State minus 19.05. My uh, The raw stats have Kansas State minus 19.81. Troy's offense really got cooking last week. Um, Looked look good passing the ball, even though they only threw it you know 30-some-odd percent of the time. Uh, their passing success rate was not great, but their passing explosiveness was off the charts, number 18 in the country in that. Uh, PPA per pass was number 29. Well, Kansas State's defense... Uh, number 26 in that spot so far. So, it, again, only one game. Uh, PPA per rush, Kansas State's defense, number three. Uh, Kleiman's team is set up well here. I, I know it's a big number. I'm going to roll Kansas State minus 17 on this, and a big part of this is the situation. Kansas State messed around last year, and they got caught at home by Tulane. Troy is pretty good. I don't think Troy is as good as they were last season. They had a lot of senior leadership. They got some new faces now. I am expecting Virginia Tech to handle business, uh, or excuse me, Kansas State to handle business uh, at home. Minus 17 on that one. Next up, Purdue heads to Virginia Tech. And Virginia Tech is a two-and-a-half point favorite juiced at minus 115 uh, at most places. 11 a.m. Central Time game on ESPN2. The total sits at 48 on this one. And let's go on and pull it up on your screen. Virginia Tech, 4-2 and two against the spread in their last six overall. It seems like Brent Pry has kind of figured some things out. Grant Wells, the quarterback, played well last week. Uh, granted, it was against Old Dominion, but regardless. Purdue, 7-4 and four against the spread on the road since 2021. However, that was all under Jeff Brom. We've yet to see uh, exactly what uh, what the new guy is going to do, right? And so, uh, let's look at the numbers. Let's look at the numbers. Okay, so my power rating has Purdue minus 2.67. Raw stats have Virginia Tech minus 6.67. Um, the Virginia Tech offense only threw the ball 40% of the time, but they were number 40 in PPA per pass, number 40 in passing success rate. They weren't super explosive, but look at what that offensive line did in that first game. Number six in the country in Havoc rate allowed. Uh, Purdue's defense, so far, not fantastic. Number 114 in Havoc, uh, that's that's not going to get it, I don't think. Uh, you look at You look at some of these numbers, and I'm just... I don't know. I, I expected more out of a Ryan Walters team. I just, you know, I, just more than, than what I got in that first game because they made Mikey Keene at Fresno State look like Drew Brees. He looked unbelievable. And he's, you know, a smaller quarterback height-wise. Uh, looking on offense, I mean, they were able to throw the ball 
pretty well, number 45 PPA per pass, but number 82 passing success rate against Fresno, uh, they couldn't run the ball. Number 102 in PPA per rush. PPA, by the way, is predicted points added for anybody that's uh, questioning. So they couldn't run, and running seems to be Virginia Tech's defense. Virginia Tech's defense can defend the pass. They were number 32 in PPA per pass, number 29 in pass uh, success rate allowed. I There's a reason why Virginia Tech is favored here. I'm going to ride with it. Yeah, give me give me Virginia Tech to uh, to cover this minus two and a half. I'm kind of surprised because it, it felt like they had just fallen off a cliff, and I thought Purdue had more in the uh, more in the barrel there, but definitely not so far. Uh, do me a favor, like the video, subscribe to the channel, of course, uh, and we will continue to move on. Uh, leave your comments, by the way. I want to know what you guys think on these games. All right, we got a ranked on ranked matchup. Ole Miss heads to New Orleans. Tulane, a seven and a half point home dog, total of 66 and a half. This one's at 2.30 p.m. Central Time on ESPN2. Uh, let's go over some of these trends right quick. Ole Miss, 4-2 and 1 against the spread as a road favorite. Tulane is 3 and 0 oh against the spread as a dog just last year. Right? Tulane's spread numbers were phenomenal. They were unbelievable last year, and I think a lot of it had to do with it. they were so terrible in 2020, or excuse me, in 2021, that when they came out last year like gangbusters, nobody knew how to adjust the line correctly, right? They were they were fantastic, but a big part of that was Tajay Spears, who is now, of course, playing in the NFL. Um, looking at these numbers, my power rating has Ole Miss by 9.99. My raw stats have Ole Miss minus 31.54. So, okay. I, I don't know. Like, beating Mercer doesn't do a ton for me, other than the fact that they looked clean. Everything was seamless. Every quarterback played pretty well. That's a pretty decent football team. Um, and when you take out the garbage time, which it got to garbage time pretty quick for Ole Miss, uh, Ole Miss was number 93 PPA per pass. Michael Pratt was 14 out of 15 for nearly 300 yards last week. Uh, had four touchdowns in the game against South Alabama. Just just bananas. Uh, crazy numbers. And they only threw the ball 26.92% of the time. So, yeah. Uh, the PPA per pass was crazy. The pass success rate was only number 53, but Ole Miss was number 124 in that spot. So that, that wasn't great, but Mercer is a top 20 FCS team, and Ole Miss beat them 73-7. to So again, it doesn't do a ton for me, but you get the point. Uh, looking down at the Ole Miss offensive numbers against the Tulane defensive numbers, Tulane's defense, number 91, PPA per rush allowed, Ole Miss number four. You know Quinshawn Judkins and that bunch are going to run the football. They're going to be good at it. Uh, as far as passing the ball, Jackson Dart looked the best that I think he's ever looked in Oxford. Another year in this system, you know, getting some coaching from Lane Kiffin, uh, brought in a little bit of competition. I think that's good. I think that was definitely good. So, yeah, uh, I look at this. I know it's all the way up to seven and a half. Look, I'll admit, I bet this thing at six. I think I still like Ole Miss minus seven and a half. I think there's too much talent on the roster. Uh, I know that Tulane is good, and I know that they are at home. I know this is their Super Bowl and all that good stuff. But Ole Miss is in a spot where – they were geared up for this game, too. There's no look ahead for them next week. They play Alabama in two weeks. Like, I, I'm not worried about it. So I will take Ole Miss minus the seven and a half. Next on the board. Let's see what we got. Ah, El Asico. Iowa, Iowa State in Ames. Iowa State is a four-point underdog at home. Total of 36 and a half. It's 2.30 p.m. Central Time on Fox. And we'll pull up the numbers so you can see. Iowa, of course, has won the last five straight in Ames. Uh, the under has hit in seven of the last eight in this series. Iowa 7-3 and three against the spread on the road since 2021. Iowa State 2-4-1 and one against the spread as a dog since 2021. Matt Campbell, his, his bunch has not performed well in this role in the past... Uh, however long it's been, uh, past two years, right? They they were really good in 2020, and then 2021, 2022 did not go so well. Both of these teams missing some starters, Iowa State missing more. 
Let's look at the numbers. My power rating has Iowa minus 1.6. Uh, the raw stats after Iowa State's win over uh, Northern Iowa last week it has Iowa State winning by 13 points. I don't trust either of these. Uh, let's look at some of the numbers. The The defense, of course, fantastic for Iowa. Uh, number 35 PPA per pass. Uh, they were, let's see, number 64 PPA per drive on defense. So that's definitely not good. Uh, on offense, just not great at all. <laughs> not great at all. Uh, number 105 PPA per drive on offense. But staying on this, uh, look, Iowa State's defense was unbelievable last week, at least as far as advanced stats go. Number nine PPA per pass, number 14 PPA per rush. Um, they shut down Northern Iowa, and typically they have trouble with somebody like that. But you go back and look at what Iowa State was able to do throwing the football under Rocco Becht. Number 86 PPA per pass, number 114 passing success rate. This was not a this was not a great spot for them. They were number 120 in offensive success rate. You tried doing that against Iowa. So the total is 36 and a half on this. Every number I've got says that we should go over. I'm not going to mess with that. I'm going to take Iowa minus the four. Uh, I think a lot of what they did last week is they got a two touchdown lead and then kind of sat on it preparing for this game. So give me Iowa minus the four. And uh, yeah, I think I think we're going to be okay there. I think we're going to be all right there. All right, moving along. We got a fun one in the afternoon. And let's go on and let's go on and pull up the numbers. Uh, App State heads to North Carolina. And App State is, let's see. App State is a 19-point underdog currently. Total of 58 on it. It's 4.15 p.m. Uh, Central Time on the ACC Network, which ain't great. Ain't great. Uh, App State, 2-0 and o against the spread as a road dog in the last two years. But in their last six on the road, they are 1-5 and five against the number. Uh, North Carolina, 6-7 and seven against the spread at home. Um, or it's a home fave since 2021. Uh, look, the power rating on this says North Carolina minus 24.77. But the raw stats on it say North Carolina minus 12.37. So, of course, the number is right there in the middle between like 25 and 12 and a half or whatever, right? It's 18 and a half, 19. Uh, North Carolina looked fantastic. They had multiple tackles for loss against South Carolina, but I don't really like South Carolina's offensive line. App State's head coach, Sean Clark, is an offensive lineman. That's what he does. He coached offensive line. Uh, I think that they are not going to be as great. Uh, but, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. You look at the Havoc numbers, number eight for North Carolina's defense and Havoc, or Havoc created, and then number 68 for App State and Havoc allowed through just one game this season. Look. I, this game was crazy last year. Do Are we trusting a Gene Chizik defense this early? I know North Carolina's at home, and it feels like that home crowd's going to be fired up for Drake May and whatnot. I still don't really like this North Carolina coaching staff. I know they looked fantastic last week. But I'm going to take App State plus the 19 to at least hang within the number here. And maybe I'm nuts. You guys can tell me. But I, I will take App State plus 19 on this because I... It seemed too good to be true for North Carolina. And maybe they'll just prove me completely wrong again, but we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get there, right? <laughs> we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Next on the board, Ohio at Florida Atlantic. Florida Atlantic, a three-and-a-half point favorite. Total of 62-and-a-half on this one. Uh, it's going to be 5 p.m. you got to have your streamers ready. ESPN Plus on this. Make sure you got your high-speed internet broadband FAU 6-6 six and six against the spread since 2021 at home. Uh, well, 6-6-1, six, six and one, excuse me. Ohio 2-3 and three against the spread as a road dog in their last five. Uh, they are saying that Rourke is probably going to play. But, I mean, he was cleared last week as well, and he didn't play, and they only hung 27 on Long Island. They should have done better. 
Um, I don't like what this Ohio team is doing right now. I think in non-conference play, they're not super worried about it. Last year, the game against Ohio, or excuse me, the Ohio game at home against FAU had to do with uh, they wanted to get more reps, show proof of concept, all that kind of stuff, because Tim Alvin had a terrible first season as head coach. Um, look, this go-round, if Rourke is not playing, I mean, they, there's no way that this number should be 3.5, and right? And and I don't know that the total should be 62.5. Casey Thompson for FAU played fantastic last week. I mean, just great numbers. We, we can pull these up and look. Um, PPA per pass for FAU was number 6 last week. Uh, passing success rate, number 17, number 12 in passing explosiveness. They'll be able to take advantage of Ohio's defense. And as far as the the run goes, you know, they ran the ball 55% of the time. Uh, they were number 73 PPA per rush, number 58 rushing success rate. But here's the kicker. Like, those things can change on a down-to-down basis. What you really want to look for is offensive line yards, where FAU is number 32 in the country uh, based on last week's numbers, and stuff rate. Stuff rate allowed... Uh, they were number 17, so they were getting pushed. Granted, weaker opponent, we get that. However, Ohio, I don't think, is fantastic. You look at the defensive numbers for FAU, they were really good against the rush, uh, which is a big, big step for Ohio. If And Ohio's dealing with all these injuries and whatnot. But if they don't have Rourke, they're not going to be able to stay in this ballgame. So I'm going to trust that. Even if he is back, I think they're going to take it easy with him. Uh, My power number on this has Florida Atlantic minus 8.92. My projected spread from raw stats has Florida Atlantic over two touchdowns. It's three and a half. I know it's over a key number. Give me FAU minus the three and a half here. I like Tom Herman. I like what he's doing here. He's got a a veteran team, like a bunch of returning production here. I feel pretty good about this one. All right, let me tell you right quick. Ticketsmarter.com, the Ticket Smarter app. You can use the promo code WCE20 to get $20 off, $300 or more. Any one of these big time games, if you're wanting to go to one this weekend, something like that, Texas, Alabama, Nebraska, Colorado, et cetera, any of those are going to be well into the 300s, if not more. Um, you can use WCE20 as your promo code. That's going to give you $20 off. $300 or more. And I'll tell you another one. If you're wanting to go to some of these smaller games, you want to buy a couple of tickets, et cetera, you can use WCE10, WCE10 for $10 off $100 or more over at Ticketsmarter.com. Get in the game with Ticketsmarter. Most certainly. We appreciate them being a part of the show. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Of course, that is going to help out tremendously. Uh, But we got eight more games that we got to roll through. So, again, go check out the Third Dog Thursday show, the BetUS College Football Show. There's links to all this in the description. Uh, The Third Dog Thursday show is on on this channel. You should be able to find that. But uh, but subscribe to the channel, and we uh, we certainly appreciate it. Tell your friends about it. Jump in the comments. You know how it goes. You know how it goes. All right. We got the stats pulled up, and let's fire in Cincinnati. Heads to Pitt, the River City rivalry. 5.30 p.m. Central Time on the CW. Pitt currently a seven-point favorite with a total of 45. And this one's interesting, right? Because it opened short, opened like three and a half, somewhere around there. A lot of Pitt money came in early. This thing got up to seven and a half. It's been bet back down just a little bit. Pitt is seven and seven against the spread as a home fave in their last 14. Cincinnati... 0-4 0-4 against the spread as a dog last year. Not good. Not great. Uh, but they do have a new coach, Scott Satterfield. They got a new quarterback, Emory Jones. Of course, I'm sure some of you remember him being at Florida under Dan Mullen. He uh, he started over Anthony Richardson, and then he went to Arizona State. And now he is at Cincinnati for his last year of eligibility. Looking at the PPA margin numbers on this, these are two pretty good teams. Like, two actually really good teams. Um, You look at this, Cincinnati is number 11 in PPA margin. Pitt is number 8. Now, granted, both of these teams played weak teams in week one. However, if you're a good team, you take care of bad teams, right? Offensive success rate for Pitt, number 18. For Cincy, it was number 12. 
Defensive success rate, number 12 for Pitt, number 91 for Cincinnati. So the defense numbers, not great. Um, and the, the good news is that the weakness for the Cincinnati defense appears to be their secondary. They were number 120 in PPA per pass against their FCS opponent. Um, but, I mean, they did defend the pass, you know, 54.17% of the time last week. Uh, Pitt is not going to throw the ball that much, even with new quarterback Phil Djokovic. Um, looking at this, Pitt likes to run the ball. They were number eight in PPA per rush. Cincy, not great numbers stopping the run last week. Everything Pitt did on offense worked last week. Now, on the other side, Cincinnati, good offensive numbers, uh, looked pretty good everywhere. And, of course, Pitt's defense looks fantastic. I mean, that's that's 100% what old Nardog does, right? So Narduzzi and company, they're, uh, they're looking good. My issue here is I don't necessarily trust Pitt to cover as a, you know, a touchdown or more favorite. This line is at seven. My power number says Pitt minus 4.7. Uh, the raw stats say Cincinnati minus 0.13. Uh, it, it appears that Cincy a little more explosive. They were number three in offensive explosiveness. Um, Pitt is not explosive at all. So, uh, okay, I, I think Cincy can hit a couple of big plays here and there. I think they can stay within this number. I'm going to take Cincinnati. I will take Cincinnati on this. Uh, it's going to be very interesting. Going to be very interesting. All right, moving along. Moving along. We got a big one in Tuscaloosa. Texas heads to Alabama, Bryant-Denny Stadium. The Tide are a seven-point favorite. Total of 53.5 on this. 6 p.m. Eastern time, excuse me, Central time, God's time zone, on ESPN, Alabama. 9, 5, and 1 against the spread as a uh, home favorite since 2021. And let's see. Pull it up on your screen here so you can actually see. Uh, again, for those that are watching for the first time, we only have week zero and week one worth of data. These are raw stat projections. My power number is at the top up here. So Alabama 9, 5, and 1 against the spread at home since 2021. Texas. One and four against the spread as a dog, and zero and three as a road dog under Steve Sarkeesian. This one's going to be interesting, right? Um, you look at, I mean, Texas was terrible against the pass last week. Now they only gave up ten points to Rice, but regardless, PPA per pass number one hundred nine, uh, number one hundred four in passing success rate allowed. They uh, were number one hundred four in passing explosiveness. However, that defense uh, number one and have it created. Well, Alabama's offensive line does not allow havoc. They were number 33 last week. Uh, you know, passing downs PPA, Alabama, PPA is pretty good points added. Uh, number 15 for Alabama's offense, number 123 for Texas's defense. Now, the question is, because Alabama is going to have to run the football to set up the pass, right? Alabama beats Texas tomorrow. How funny. How funny. Thanks a lot, Apple. Uh, <laughs> looking at these numbers, uh, Texas's defense, number one in PPA per rush allowed, uh, number one in rushing success rate allowed, number 14 in offensive line yards allowed. Uh, however, they were number, only number 46 in stuff rate. Alabama's offensive line is great in all this stuff. Number six, PPA per rush. Number 11, rushing success rate. Uh, number 44 in rushing explosiveness which is something Jalen Milrow is going to be all over that, right? But you look at the other side of the ball. PPA per pass for Texas's offense was number 82. Now, they were number 31 in passing success rate, which means they were better at hitting the uh, shorter throws, right? Quinn Ewers still having trouble hitting deep passes. His numbers would have been off the charts if he had hit those two long balls to uh, Xavier Worthy last week. Um but looking at this Alabama defense, a lot of this is going to be dependent on whether or not uh, Key and uh, Malachi Moore are healthy for that defense and whether or not Alabama's uh, edge rushers can get home against that offensive line. Here is the thing to pay attention to. Texas's offense, number 126 in havoc rate allowed, and that was Rice's defensive line. Alabama, number 41 in havoc rate created. So... It's something to pay attention to. Something to pay attention to. 
Uh, PPA per rush, Alabama was only number 119. Uh, number 128 in rushing success rate allowed. But this is non-garbage time against Middle Tennessee, so eh, we'll, we'll see. But same thing for Texas. Texas never really got into garbage time. Uh, they were number 58 in rushing success rate, number 55 in PPA per rush. Uh, this Texas offensive line, not awesome as far as stuff rate goes, but neither was Alabama's defensive line. I'm, I'm kind of curious about this. Uh, this is going to be the matchup to watch for me is what, what is, what is Texas capable of doing uh, on the other side? Right. And so uh, looking at this, I mean, it's Alabama at home night game where the fans actually feel threatened for once. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take Alabama to cover the seven, even though I don't feel great about it. We'll see. We'll see what happens. All right, moving along. We're not going to get this done in the time that I wanted, but that's okay. Like the video. Oregon at Texas Tech, six and a half point home dog for the Red Raiders in Lubbock. 6 p.m. Central Time on Fox. We're going to pull up the numbers here. Do we get road Bo Nix here? That's the question, right? Oregon 3-1 and one against the spread as a road favorite under Dan Lanning. Texas Tech 2-0 and oh against the spread as a home dog, but only 2-4 and four against the spread uh, versus ranked teams under Joey McGuire. This is an interesting spot. Uh, I will tell you, so again, my numbers here, power rating, Oregon minus 9.18. Uh, based on raw stats after last week, Oregon minus 66.44. That's just absurd numbers. Just stupid after one week. Um, look, I'm going to take Oregon minus the 6.5, mainly because of my power rating. I don't necessarily trust last week's numbers. What I'm curious about is, do we see... Do we see Texas Tech come out with something different than what they had after the first quarter against Wyoming? Remember, they went up 17 to nothing, and it felt like they just kind of put everything else back. They put the whole play sheet back in the bag. Didn't figure they were going to need it. And by the time they got it back out, this game was already in overtime. It was a mess. Don't forget, Laramie is a tough place to play, just like Lubbock, right? So, bad spot last week. I mean, remember Tim DeRuder? Uh, the defensive coordinator in uh, Lubbock is like he was the Oregon defensive coordinator and he did not get retained by the new staff. Uh, on the other side, Texas Tech quarterback Tyler Shuck, he was shown the door as well. Uh, they the Oregon basically told him that they didn't have any room in their quarterback room for him to be there. So how much of a chip on their shoulder do they play with? I don't like this two and four against the spread against ranked teams. I don't like that. So, uh, I'm not going to play into it. I'm going to take Oregon to cover the six and a half here. I know I'm going against a home dog at night. Not, not the best thing you could possibly do. I get that, but I just uh, this Oregon team is loaded. I mean, this roster is stacked. Uh, I feel good about it. There's there's not much to break down. The numbers skew Oregon's way every which way that you could do it. So, I've I've got it pulled up here so you guys can. Pause the uh, the video and look at the numbers if you want to, but you're not going to find any that really favor Texas Tech here. So I'll take Oregon, minus the 6.5, and, and I might look like a fool afterwards, but hey, I, I was kind of hyping up Texas Tech. I bet on them last week. So you're not doing it again to me, the Red Raiders. All right, Washington State is hosting Wisconsin on the Palouse. The... The Cougars are a six-point underdog at home. We're going to pull up the numbers here. And let's see, the total is 58 on this. 6.30 p.m. Central Time on ABC. Uh, this is a big spot for uh, for the Cougars here. Uh, Wisconsin didn't look fantastic last week, but obviously we know that they've got a good, strong running game. Phil Longo is going to be able to figure out a good offensive game plan here. Washington State 4-2 and two against the spread as a home dog under Jake Dickert. Uh, Wisconsin, 4-3 and three against the spread as a road favorite in the last two years. Uh, again, Wisconsin, new coaching staff, etc. Washington State offensive coordinator Ben Arbuckle. I am infatuated with this guy. He is fascinating to me. He's super young. Was at Western Kentucky last year. I'm, I'm kind of in on this. Uh, only number 66 PPA per pass. Number 40 pass success rate. 
number 60 in passing explosiveness, but they were number 30 in passing downs PPA and number 40 in passing down success rate. So the defense for Wisconsin was not, like, fantastic. They couldn't get any havoc created. You know, if if Washington State's trying to run the ball, then, yeah, like, Wisconsin might be able to have an edge there, but... I don't I don't see a clear advantage for Wisconsin when they're on defense. Now when they are on offense, I don't see a clear advantage there either. <laughs> now this is only through one game, but Washington State looked fantastic against Colorado State. Um, you look at PPA per rush, and that's the biggest thing in this game. Can Braylon Allen run on this defense? And we kind of we kind of saw it last year. Paul Christ could not get that offense going and He's used to it, right? Phil Longo kind of used to throwing the ball around. Like he does, he'll do whatever the personnel dictates. However, you look at offense, they were number 78 PPA per pass. Tanner Mordecai didn't look great for Wisconsin last week. Uh, he looked okay, but he wasn't, you know, all world or anything. And you look at this, they like to rush the ball more. Obviously, at Wisconsin, they were number 40 in rush rate last uh, last year, last week. What am I talking about? Uh, but you look at some of these numbers, and number 29 PPA per rush for Wisconsin. Washington State was number 18 PPA per rush. Uh, rushing success rate. Wisconsin was number 55 against Buffalo. Washington State was number 14. Only allowed 21.05% of rushing plays to uh, to be graded as successful. Uh, I, I think this thing's going to be close. Like, really, really close. So my number on it has Washington... So the raw number has Washington State minus 8 using just last week's stats. My power number has Wisconsin minus 10.74. I, I'm i going to split the difference here. I think Washington State stays within this 6. Uh, give me give me the Cougars at home. I mean, Pac-12 team, It eventually it'll get to be a Pac-12 after dark game, right? I would think. At least close to it. Uh, yeah, I think... I think Washington State can hang around here. I feel I feel okay about that. All right, uh, like the video, subscribe, share it out, all the good stuff. Toss in the comments. Who are your picks this week? What do you think about these picks? Am I nuts on some of these? Probably. But that would certainly help me out. I'm curious to hear what you guys think about it. All right, moving along, we got four more to hit. Eastern Michigan heads to Minnesota. I'm sure you're like, why are you picking this? Well, if you're asking that question, you have not been watching this show. I cover all the games on here that we don't cover on the BetUS show, along with, you know, whatever I think is the most interesting of the week. And Eastern Michigan is always interesting to me because their coach, Chris Creighton. Okay, they are they are a fantastically coached football team. Um, they go on the road. Eastern Michigan, 9-5 and five against the spread as a dog over the last two years. They've always been really good on the road as well. Minnesota, 6-6 six and six against the spread. Uh, let's see. As a home favorite since 2021, they're 5-3 and three against the spread in non-conference matchups over the last two years as well. Uh, the kid's name from Eastern Michigan that I'm trying to pull up right now. Let's see. Austin Smith last week. Not... Great, but also not terrible. He did throw a pick uh, against Howard last week. You look at the final score for Eastern Michigan last week. They won 33-23 to over Howard. However, they were up 30-9 to at the half, and it felt like they could do kind of whatever they wanted to. So you look at, you look at some of these numbers. By the way, this is a 6.30 p.m. game on uh, Big Ten Network. Minnesota is favored by 20.5 with a total of 48 here. My power number has Minnesota by almost 30. My raw stats number after one week has Minnesota by 1.74. You look at the offensive numbers for Minnesota, and they could not get anything done against Nebraska last week. I mean, just absolutely nothing. Uh, you look at Minnesota, or excuse me, at Eastern Michigan, and their defensive numbers were not great against Howard, at least not when it comes to uh, defending the run. When it comes to defending the pass, yeah, they were pretty good in that spot. Number 41 PPA per pass, number 22 passing success rate allowed. Uh, they're great at stopping explosive passes. They're not great at stopping explosive runs. 
Let's see. Let's look at the defense here. Uh, defense for Minnesota. Minnesota's not great at stopping the run. Obviously, Nebraska was able to take advantage of that. Uh, they're number 92 PPA per rush so far. Number 115 rush rate. Number 116 rushing success rate. Yeah, I, I've i talked myself into this pretty good. I think Eastern Michigan's going to hang within this number. I don't think Minnesota is all that worried about this game. I don't think they're going to try and blow anybody out or whatever. They've got North Carolina on deck for next week, if I'm not mistaken. This seems like a good spot um, for Eastern Michigan to be able to stay within that number. Uh, Eastern Michigan will fight you. Like, they are. They they will fight. And Chris Creighton is a fantastic coach. He will find a matchup advantage, and he will continue to hammer it. I, I think they'll be able to do that here. And my guess is, on offense, uh, that they're going to be able to take advantage of maybe Minnesota's run defense. We'll, we'll see. But that's that's what I'm looking at here because – I mean, Minnesota, they couldn't get any stuffs. They, they're not great in offensive line yards. They just kind of got whipped last week. Uh, Eastern Michigan is not Nebraska. Don't get this twisted. But I think that they can stay within 20 and a half. Minnesota still wins easily. But Eastern Michigan plus the 20 and a half. Uh, and if I get burned by that hook, I'm going to be so irritated. Because I've bet it at 21, but still sitting on 20 and a half. It's the way it goes. All right, moving along. Moving right along. We spent longer on that one than I anticipated. UCLA heads to San Diego to take on the San Diego State Aztecs, and they are currently a 14-and-a-half-point favorite on the road. This one's going to be on CBS. CBS, it's 6.30 p.m. Eastern time on Saturday evening, and we'll pull up the numbers here. Uh, power rating has UCLA minus uh, basically 19, 18.98. Uh, raw statistical numbers have uh, just through... San Diego State's two games that they've played and UCLA's one. Uh, it's got UCLA favored by five here. So let's take a look at this. Uh, UCLA's defense was really good at stopping the run against Coastal Carolina last week. Really, really good. Uh, by the way, trends on this UCLA five and one against the spread as a road favorite since 2021. Uh, San Diego State four and two against the spread as a home dog in that same span. All right. UCLA's defense appears to have been shored up pretty significantly on that defensive line, especially in that front seven. Uh, that is exactly what San Diego State wants to do. They run the ball 60% of the time in the first two games already. Uh, but you you turn around and you, I mean, obviously we're talking about a Chip Kelly offense here. It, they're not fantastic. San Diego State's defense is not fantastic at stopping the run so far this year. Number 103 in rushing success rate allowed, and that's against Idaho State and Ohio. Now, UCLA, not great numbers last week. Number 96 in rushing success rate against Coastal Carolina's defense. Number 85 PPA per rush. Uh, I think they get that fixed this week. Like, I, I really trust them. You know, Chip Kelly, Ken Niamatololo, the former Navy head coach, uh, and you got a stable of running backs there, TJ Harden and uh, uh, Steele. I mean, they are, they looked good last week. Numbers were fine. I am going to go with UCLA to cover the 14 and a half. I will freely admit I've already bet UCLA minus 13 and a half. Uh, so typically I would get these numbers out to you earlier in the week. It's been quite a week. So I'll take UCLA to cover the 14 and a half here. Um, it's going to be an interesting game. Interesting game. All right. We got two more that we got to hit on. So let's go on and get to them, and uh, we might be able to get this done in the next, you know, eight minutes or whatever. Uh, Stanford heads to USC, and look, USC is a 29-point home favorite here. Total is 70. 70. Uh, this is a 9.30 p.m. Central Time kick on Fox. Stanford, 2-8 and eight against the spread as a road dog since 2021. USC is... Six and three against the spread as a home favorite under Lincoln Riley. They like to cover some of these numbers. So you look at the ESPN strength of record, you look at what USC, I mean, just ridiculous. Uh, Stanford's defense was not great at stopping the pass last week. Oh, the power numbers, I've got USC by 34. So power ratings have them by 34. The raw statistical numbers have them by 
44.31, which is just absurd. But a lot of that has to do with the, you know, the defense. Stanford's defense could not stop Hawaii, at least not from moving the ball. Uh, Stanford's defense, number 77 in PPA per pass allowed, number 67 in passing success rate, but Hawaii threw the ball 85% of the time last week. Uh, part of that's because they were already down, right? Ashton Daniels, that quarterback for Stanford, fantastic. I mean, that kid was unreal. Three-star uh, from the Southeast. I mean, he's he looked great. Uh, USC on the other side, of course, that offense is going to look good. Number 10 PPA per pass, number 16 PPA per rush. All the transfers that they brought in, all of them appear to have hit. Uh, their offensive line looks pretty good, number 27 in offensive line yards. They're not great in uh, stuff rate so far, number 57, which Stanford might be able to take care of that. But Havoc rate allowed, number 31. Uh, Stanford couldn't create Havoc plays against Hawaii. I don't think they're going to do it here. So USC... Uh, obviously massive advantage on offense and when you look at the d or yeah the usc defensive numbers they're like they're not terrible and the stanford offensive numbers against hawaii they couldn't run the ball they could throw it obviously uh number 46 ppa per pass number 28 passing success rate but they were number 76 rushing success rate against hawaii and number 88 ppa per rush usc can do that same thing but I think USC is going to score a lot. So in this spot, like I, I think Troy Taylor wants to play fast. Of course, former FCS coach uh, at Sacramento State. I think he wants to play fast. You get into a shootout with USC, they're probably going to be able to cover. I'm going to regret this. I can already tell it. I can already tell that I'm going to regret the hell out of this. Um, give me USC to cover minus 29 here. I think there's just too many weapons here. I mean, I might be wrong. I don't know. My, my power numbers like this and the raw stats like it. So give me USC minus 29. All right. We got one more game. 16 games on today's show. I typically break this out into two different shows. Uh, let's do this. Write down the time. Oklahoma State heads to Arizona State. And my goodness, they are... A three-point road favorite at Arizona State. Total sits at 56. It's 9.30 p.m. Central Time game on FS1. Arizona State 1-3 and three against the spread as a home dog since 2021. Oklahoma State 2-0 and oh as a road favorite since 2021. And they are 7-3 and three against the spread overall on the road in that time span. My power numbers like Oklahoma State minus 10. My raw stats like Oklahoma State minus one. So both of these teams struggled with FCS teams last week. Uh, Oklahoma State only had a 20% uh, postgame win expectancy against Central Arkansas last week. So you know that ain't good, right? I This Oklahoma State defense did not do well against Central Arkansas, even though they only gave up 13 points. Uh, number 97 PPA per pass. Number 91 passing success rate allowed. Uh, they did create havoc, so that's good. Number 21 in the country in that. So they might be able to get after Jaden Rashada. Uh, we'll see if Drew Pine is going to play. I think uh, there's there's been talk that he might be able to play this week. But uh, Rashada's got the talent, right? So why would you not? Uh, these are two teams that play drastically different so far. Plays per game, Arizona State was number 123 in the country. Only 114 game, uh, plays last week. Oklahoma State, number 18. You know Gundy likes to play fast. So just something to pay attention to there. But I'm I'm curious on this one if Oklahoma State is just headed down a, a terrible path. But I don't know. I have to trust Gundy here, right? I mean, you look at these numbers. A, a 10 power rating? I mean, are we really going to get a total in the 30s? Between Kenny Dillingham and Mike Gundy? No, I don't think so. I think uh, I think last week was just a bad game. Oklahoma State wasn't ready for it. Arizona State, they got a lot of changes. They got a lot of new things. I I have to trust Gundy on the road. I mean, I just, I got to. Got to trust him. So you guys can look at the numbers for yourselves, see what they did through week one. And, uh, and I'm going to take Oklahoma State minus the three on the road. 17 home dogs this week. I'm betting against some of them. What am I doing? 
What am I doing with my life? All right. You guys have been fantastic. Go check out Three Dog Thursday. Check out the Bet US College Football Show. Of course, uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends about it. Uh, the podcast as well. You can always check that out. I uh, would certainly appreciate that. You can go to buymeacoffee.com slash winning cures or do the Telegram thing. Download the Telegram app, search for Gary WCE. I will give you all of the plays that I make during the week. Um, should be should be fun over there. I'm trying to build that thing up. I'm trying to build up all of these different things since I'm since I'm not on Twitter at the moment, which hopefully we'll have resolved soon. We'll see. Uh, but either way, don't forget Ticket Smarter. Use the promo codes WCE10. You get ten dollars off an order of a hundred dollars or more, or WCE20. You'll get twenty dollars off three hundred dollars or more. I think that's good. I think we're good. Let's get out of here. Uh, you guys have been fantastic. Again, tell your friends about the show. Uh, with that said, take care of yourself. Take care of each other. God bless college football, and hopefully all of your tickets cash this week. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and follow me on Twitter, at GaryWCE. If you want to toss in a question, you can email me, Gary, at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure and hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.